Michelle Klein-Hass, uh, Ms. Geek, and we're here talking with Fred Gallagher from Mega Tokyo. And uh, I must say, I've been following your web manga now for uh, over ten years. Yep, I it's mean, it's in, it's impressive. It's oh, it's you've been managing to keep it going, and it's it's. You can either look at it as it's impressive to keep it going, or uh, it, it's amazing that it's taking me ten years to get it to where it is. Uh, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a couple of different ways to look at it, so. Um. And I look at some contemporaries who have started and finished two or three series in the time it's taken me to. <laughs> but, you know, no, I've, I've, I've well, been keeping at it. It, it, it. You know, sometimes quality takes time. Or just it takes time <laughs> to get it. To, it but it's, it's been an interesting experience to sort of watch how it unfolds because it's, I, I it's not something that I've planned out from the beginning. It's something that I've sort of allowed the character sort of, sort of create where it goes and take it where it's going to go. So in a lot of ways, I'm as interested in finding out where things go as mm. everybody else is. Uh, so it's part of what keeps it interesting, I think. Yeah. Now, how far into the future are you kind of having your brain? I sort of know how this chapter goes. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, it's sort of like Largo and Erica when I first started putting them together. And, and this, I did, there, I, there was no decision that it was going to turn out one way or the other. I had to see how the characters interacted. And it could have very well not worked out, but it did. So... That's but, what uh, I what's interesting is that it's still kind of iffy as to what they really, what they really are. You uh, know, well, it's like it's, what they really are to each other. I, probably I like, not unusual with people in general. You know, I like, like the fact that uh, I, I like the fact that it's kind of open ended and it kind of uh, well, uh, sort of like the whole Scully and Mulder thing. It's like when yeah. they managed to X Files was wonderful until they tried to explain everything. Mm. Yep. I mean that is a, that is a, a, an example that I mm -hmm. use quite a bit yeah. uh, when you're, when you're talking about story because the minute you try to and it's not like you're trying to take the wonder out of it but the minute you try to explain it it sort of takes some of the perceptive side of things out and can actually really damage how it how it feels or how it sounds so do you feel like having a little bit of mystery too is um... well I mean yeah and if you, the, the thing is is that life I mean has, there's a lot of mystery in life you don't really know I mean only movies are patent designed and you know you get the stories that like ender's game for instance there, there's no love interest in the story but whenever they talk about doing a film a movie oh they've got to create a love interest it's, you know whenever i think of film too i think of what's been cut and left on the floor yep. mm. by the way i'm pam gross beep beep okay. yes <laughs> and uh yeah it, it's it's kind of impressive to watch how the characters have evolved because everyone has you know it's like Largo originally was, you know, this crazy American who just, you know, has this field of chaos mm -hmm. surrounding him. But it's like you're starting to get into him as a human being. And mm -hmm. I mean, even, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, well, even Miho, even mm -hmm. Miho, who was just, you know, yeah. very much, you know, this is the antagonist character but mm -hmm. now she's just blossoming well what you do is you, it's, it's sort of like you know Largo could be a very one-dimensional character very flat very you know just a cartoon character and I have this tendency to look at everybody as being people I mean do you, you ever known somebody who it's like I could never see this person like actually being interested in dating somebody and actually meeting any you know you just just never seemed like the type and then you know years later they're like married and have a couple of kids it's like, mm -hmm. how did that even happen yeah because you yeah. don't have experience of the full person and uh you know people are all like you know the uh, pyro's all emo and largo is is you know mr wild crazy guy it's a largo is the most emotional character in mega tokyo you know gamers can be very emotional people and it's they're it's because they're people you know yep. and um so really you know it's it's like you want to take characters and show the various different sides of them you know sometimes there isn't a lot there but sometimes there's more than you think when you when yeah. you look so i try to let the character sort of evolve in ways that seem realistic that seem like it, it, they turn into something yeah i love that mm -hmm. i am um, i've talked with many writers i wish i were one myself and some of them say the characters almost kind of evolve oh yeah do you feel that about oh absolutely your... i have no idea where things are going uh in, in some respects until i can decide if you just force characters to do things you, it, it becomes very unnatural you have to sort of let them 
uh, decide for themselves, you know. And sometimes if you, you know, if, if something doesn't feel right, it, it's not right. You know, you're not letting the character be true to the character that's developed. So um, that's a tricky thing to do because you do control where things go, but at the same time, you know, you need to let them decide where things are really going to go. Do you have a character that you've kind of poured a lot of yourself into? Probably all of them, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you a minute since the time is limited. Is there anything you'd like to have um, on to say on our podcast, just to talk to oh. people? Well, I mean, if, well, actually, a lot of times uh, um, answering questions is actually a really good way to, to because there's so many things that you can talk about. I mean, it's one of the reasons that you'll do a, a work like this is you're trying to create something. It's not you're, you're not trying to become famous. You're not trying to make money. It's not what it's about. It's about making something that's a little hard to get across. And so if you create something that people can connect w with in some one form or another, I mean, that's that's a really nice thing to be able to do. And that's, yeah, you know, and so through my work, it's like somebody asked me to describe Mega Tokyo in a set in a couple of sentences. I can't do it. No. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, for me, it's it's the whole thing that sort of comes together. So well, um, we've, the creative process is really interesting mm -hmm. and it's different for everyone. And so it's great that you share yours because I yeah. think a lot of well, I'm kids glad people out give there, it a chance. You know, it's <laughs> there's a lot of young ones out there who aspire and you yeah, know. and then they need to know you don't need to be a professional to do it. You just need to give it a whirl. Yeah, I love the fact that you let the sketches speak for themselves. It's mm -hmm. like you, uh, you know, it's that's where the creativity is. I think yes, for different people, yes, it's absolutely. A, some people it comes out on paper. For some people it comes out when they're typing. For some people it comes. For me, most of the dialogue doesn't really come out until I've started drawing. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got friends who are in the animation industry, and it's like, yeah, the cells are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I have I have a couple of cells on the wall that. Uh, I love, but it's like I've got these sketches, yeah, and that's where the art is. That's well, where you see the well, artist. Well, that's soul. where all of my. I mean, most of my ideas will often be, um, you know, as you can see. I mean, I've got a, a, take a picture of this. Of <laughs> the various things, but you know, you get uh, just you know, you get these rough sketches that will. I mean, this is just an example of, for instance. There's there's just something that will fall into a sketch like this that I've actually scanned that and you know I mean they're not finished sketches they're not finished drawings but there's something about an expression that will really mean something so you, you know oh wow flash, you know, that's awesome. yeah that's so that, that's just an example as you can see this is just this is just a random pile of you know I got sketchbooks and I've got tons of drawings and it's like none of them to yeah. me seem like there'd be anything that you'd like want to print and make get prints of but. That's where a lot of the powerful stuff in a yeah, story will come yeah, from. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A little sketch you did that's about that big, and that's it. And it's it. like sometimes it's like my friend uh, Jim Smith, who uh, was one of the people who helped create Ren and Stimpy. Mm -hmm. uh, he, it's like when when I'd come visit him at Spumco, he'd mm -hmm. have this pile of mm -hmm. these drawings weren't good enough. Mm -hmm. But I would just go through that pile of discards and just grab and grab and grab mm -hmm. and then it's like a few years later he'd take a look at this file that i kept mm -hmm. and it was like oh that's nice <laughs> it's like yeah you did that you threw that away <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah there's no question of course then you get the stuff that you did and you're like so proud of and then you look at it a couple of years later and you're like oh what did i do <laughs> so, that is so off the off the off the off the off the scale you know so Things. you've progressed um i don't know i think so and i think that's the one thing people need to learn is like you're always going to have stuff that you're going to love it's always going to be better than anything that you're going to it's not that it's better than what you do it's just you know, you, you've got your own sort of way of doing things, and it's all about how you communicate the stuff. You know, it, and uh, it's, you know, you, even if you're not really happy with what you do, it's if it starts to get some things across to people, I mean, that's that's really the, it's a language. You know, any sort of drawing, any sort of art, I mean, video, whatever. I mean, it's a type of language. It's all about communicating stuff, you know, because, you know, the brains are in here, and we've got eyes and ears and stuff like that, and, that, and it has to translate through all that to get things across, and it's not easy sometimes. I love the the idea of it being a language. I think that's yeah. really great. Yeah. So, do you want to grab the door while <laughs> they're probably wondering? So, uh, you also have another story called uh, Warmth, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you did a drawing for the auction this mm -hmm. uh, this this time around. And uh, well, that was a story that actually the initial. So, um, part of it. I mean, it initially sort of took place, and it took place in Sendai. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And which I visited is in there, and 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 did, and it's when the when the quake happened. It it really uh, not the drawing sort of a reflection of of how it affected because 
the area that I was placing it sort of was also very seriously affected by this quick yeah. tsunami. So yeah. that's why in doing the drawing, it's not only something to, to auction for, for, for help, but also a reflection of how it had washed away a lot of that original story. Yeah. So, because I clearly can't do it the way that I originally thought of ages back. Um, but, you know, that's the nature of things. You know, not only can, you know, you have to go with the way things work out. And that yeah, is a way something worked out. So. It's like, uh, it's like Mega Tokyo is still, you know, as far as, uh, as far as story time is still back in like the, uh, the early part of 2000 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so, how do you work in something like a quake? Because that's where Largo and Eric are right now. It and, is so wrong.